Yashar Jasher 66. At that time died Hadad, the son of Bidad, king of Edom, and Samla from Mesreka, from the country of the children of the east, reigned in his place. In the thirteenth year of the reign of Pharaoh, king of Mitzrayim, which was the hundred and twenty-fifth year of Yashar'el, going down into Mitzrayim, Samla had reigned over Edom eighteen years. And when he reigned, he drew forth his hosts to go and fight against Sepho, the son of Eliphaz, and the king of Kittim, because they had made war against Angius, king of Africa, and they destroyed his whole army. But he did not engage with him, for the children of Esau prevented him, saying, He was their brother. So Samla listened to the voice of the children of Esau and turned back with all his forces to the land of Edom and did not proceed to fight against Sepho, the son of Eliphaz. And Pharaoh, king of Mitzrayim, heard this thing, saying, Samla, king of Edom, has resolved to fight the children of Kittim. And afterward, he will come to fight against Mitzrayim. And when the Mitzrayim heard this matter, they increased the labor upon the children of Yashar'el, lest Yashar'el should do unto them as they did unto them in their war with the children of Esau in the days of Hadad. So the Mitzrayim said unto the children of Yashar'el, Hasten and do your work, and finish your task, and strengthen the land, lest the children of Esau, your brethren, should come to fight against us. For on account, rather for on your account, will they come against us. And the children of Yashar'el did the work of the men of Mitzrayim day by day, and the Mitzrim afflicted the children of Yashar'el in order to lessen them in the land. But as the Mitzrim increased the labor upon the children of Yashar'el, so did the children of Yashar'el increase and multiply. And all Mitzrim was filled with the children of Yashar'el. And in the hundred and twenty-fifth year of Yashara'el's going down into Mitzrayim, all the Mitzrayim saw that their counsel did not succeed against Yashara'el, but that they increased and grew. And the land of Mitzrayim and the land of Goshen were filled with the children of Yashara'el. So all the elders of Mitzrayim and its wise men came before the king and bowed down to him and sat before him. And all the elders of Mitzrayim and the wise men thereof said unto the king, May the king live forever. You did not counsel us the counsel against the children of Yashara'el. Rather, you did counsel us the counsel against the children of Yashara'el, and we did unto them according to the word of the king. But in proportion to the increase of the labor, so do they increase and grow in the land. And behold, the whole country is filled with them. Now therefore, our Lord and King, the eyes of all Mitzrayim are upon you to give them advice with your wisdom by which they may prevail over Yashara'el to destroy them or to diminish them from the land. And the king answered, and answered them, saying, Give you counsel in this matter that we may know what to do unto them. And an officer, one of the king's counselors, whose name was Eov, from Aram Naharaim, 
in the land of Uts, answered the king, saying, If it please the king, let him hear the counsel of his servant. And the king said unto him, Speak. And Eav spoke before the king, the princes, and before all the elders of Mitzrayim, saying, Behold the counsel of the king, which he advised formerly respecting the labor of the children of Yasharael, is very good. And you must not remove from them that labor forever. But this is the advice counseled by which you may lessen them, if it seems good to the king to afflict them. Behold, we have feared war for a long time, and we said, When Yasharael becomes fruitful in the land, they will drive us from the land if a war should take place. If it please the king, let a royal decree go forth, and let it be written in the laws of Mitzrayim, which shall not be revoked, that every male child born to Yasharael his blood shall be spilled upon the ground. And by your doing this, when all the male children of Yashadael shall have died, the evil of their wars will cease. Let the king do so, and send for all the Ivri midwives, and order them in this matter to execute it. So the thing pleased the king and the princes, and the king did according to the word of Yav. And the king sent for the Ivri midwives to be called, of which the name of one was Shephra, and the name of the other Pua. And the midwives came before the king and stood in his presence. And the king said unto them, when you do the office of a midwife to the Ivri women and see them upon the stools, if it be a son, then you shall kill him. But if it be a daughter, then she shall live. But if you will not do this thing, then will I burn you up and all your houses with fire. But the midwives feared Elohim and did not hearken to the king of Mitzrayim, nor to his words. And when the Ivri women brought forth to the midwife son or daughter, then did the midwife do all that was necessary to the child and let it live. Thus did the midwives all the days. And this thing was told to the king. And he sent and called for the midwives, and he said to them, why have you done this thing and have saved the children alive? And the midwives answered and spoke together before the king, saying, Let not the king think that the Ivrith women are as the Mitzrith women, for all the children of Yashadael are lively, and before the midwife comes to them, they are delivered. And as for us, your handmaids, for many days no Ivri woman has brought forth upon us, for all the Ivrith women are their own midwives, because they are lively. And Pharaoh heard their words and believed them in this matter, and the midwives went away from the king, and Elohim dealt well with them, and the people multiplied and waxed exceedingly.